We are upgrading my garden table. Let me show you what it looks like. We are gonna resin it and we're gonna upgrade it from this to this. Also, Sky is in the back to tell you to subscribe, so make sure you do that now. Let's get pouring. Because my tabletop is glass, um, I like to use this bonding primer just so that the um, resin has something to adhere to when you put it down. Now, you can find this in any hardware store or a DIY store, that's where I got mine from. And I was looking for a black or a gray one, but they all they had was white. And do you know what? It will do just fine because we're gonna cover it entirely with epoxy anyway. So I'm just using my paint roller, putting a coat down. Um, I will actually end up putting another coat down. Um, and yeah, I would definitely recommend this step because glass is a very slick surface and you do want the epoxy to have something to bond with. The next day. Okay, so my primer was dry. Um, I did let it off gas for a day and a half and we are ready to put some resin down. So I have mixed up my J Diction Officials resin. This is uh, an emerald green which has a slight shimmer to it. You can't really see it in the cup. So I've mixed up two cups of that. And this is some black, um, an opaque black. And um, I've mixed up some green interference. Um, I know it looks like white in the cup, but when you put it down, it will show up as like green, um, sort of like, um, I don't know how to explain interference colors, but they're pretty cool. Um, and the last one is um, a forest green tint and I've got two cups of that. So I'm going to start off by putting um, a thin layer, sort of like a skim coat um, of the green, the forest green tint all over the board. Um, and I just want to do that because when I do start to put the colors down in the way that I want, I want them to have um, some epoxy down so that they can flow better and meld better. So yeah, just sort of like you, you know, you would grease a pan when you cook. Um, a very, very thin coat of resin. And I like to use my hands just to spread it out. Right, okay, now we're ready for the pour. So I'm starting off with a dirty cup. Um, I put some black in. Uh, I'm putting some emerald green in, followed by some interference. I mean, there's no right or wrong reason to making a dirty pour. You can just go with whatever colors you want and that's what I'm doing. And the way I'm gonna start off this piece is I'm gonna start off with um, the center, putting down a big vein, um, followed by a few other veins um, that are gonna be sort of like the feature points. And then the rest of it is just a case of putting down the colors and filling in the gaps. Um, and yeah, just play with it. Do what you like. Most importantly, enjoy the process. So all of my resin is now down and I'm just going in with my fingers to meld it out a little bit and fill in the gaps. So um, I want to ease off some of those harsh lines. So I'm using this blower that I have. I will link it in the description below. Um, this is not similar to a heat gun because a heat gun would give out hot air. Um, this just gives out air. Um, which isn't hot and I find it helpful in a lot of projects where you don't want to apply a ton of heat. The reason I don't want to do that here is because I don't want to thin out the epoxy um, too much because I'm going to lose all of the pattern that I've created and it is going to spread out. Right, so I've done my edges. Make sure you address your edges and I'm just going over with a blowtorch to make sure I get rid of any bubbles. This is what it looks like. This is our base layer. So we're gonna let this cure and we will be back the next day for the next step. The next day. Our resin has cured, it's the next day and it's time to put some decals on. So these are some leaf patterns that um, decals, stickers, um, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just placing them down um, 
sort of where you know just so i can see what they look like and i'm just sort of gauging where i want each one to go once i'm happy with where they are i start to actually put them down and let me tell you i am no expert at this um i am and you will see um i do end up getting a lot of air bubbles in some of these just because i was so impatient and um, yeah, this is not my area of expertise. So don't follow this tutorial for this. One eternity later. All my leaves are on and it took me, I think forever to get them on. And as you can see, I have a ton of air bubbles in a lot of them. And I suppose you could use a pin, pop the air bubbles and push out the air to smoothen them out. But I decided to leave them because I think they look like little raindrops on the leaves and I can live with them. Right, next, I'm just putting on my um, signature. Um, I have my signature like this. This is how I do it. You could obviously just sign the piece as you normally would. And once this is on, we are ready for our clear top coat or our flood coat. Isn't it amazing to create something and then be able to put your name on it? Um, it's honestly the best feeling. Okay, I have mixed up my resin for our top coat. Uh, once again, this is my J Diction Officials resin and I am going to try and link everything in the description along with my discount codes. All right, so I start with the corners and work my way in, in the middle and then I just like to use my hands to spread it around. But um, you could use a squeegee or you know whatever you prefer. And also make sure you address your edges and get your epoxy on the edges nicely covered because yeah, you most definitely want to do that. Next, I come in with my blowtorch and go through every inch of my top coat to pop any bubbles that are on the surface. I will come back and do this a couple of times and, um, and then we're just going to leave this to cure. The following day. Right, it is the next day and we are ready for our final top coat. Um, this is a product by Stone Coat Countertops. It's a matte top coat that I'm going to use which makes this project scratch resistant and because this is going to be outside I would definitely like to add this step. Right so what I've done is I have mixed up the product as per the, the instructions and I have taken my tray and lined it with some press and seal just for easy cleanup. You will need two rollers for this. One roller you're going to um, saturate with the product and apply it and then the other roller is going to be your dry roller which you're going to pick up any excess product and you're going to get rid of your lap lines but if you want detailed instructions of how to apply this coat or if you'd like to purchase some of it um, i will link uh, in the description be below stone coat countertops as well as rk3 designs they have um, amazing videos on how to use this product All right so I'm just saturating my roller with this and then I'm going to go ahead and apply a nice layer of this on the surface. You will see it white and don't be alarmed, when this dries it will be clear. It does come in two sheens, matte and gloss and I have gone for the matte finish. Um, I've applied the wet roller and I've just come over with my dry roller to take off any excess and to get rid of those lap lines. And we're going to leave this to cure for another 24 hours. 24 hours later. And there we have it. 
this is what the table looks like i love this so much i am so glad i went with the matte finish it looks like a piece of stone with some leaves on it but i love how this turned out absolutely love it let me know in the comments what you would do differently and guys do like comment and sub um, really helps my channel out really helps push out these videos on um, YouTube so yeah I'd love to hear from you and I will see you guys in the next video bye